Praxa has been one of the key reasons why Kairos is where it's at now. Fragile X is uh, our primary focus at Kairos and our, our lead program focusing on this unique potassium channel in the brain. All you need to know about this channel is that it's a master regulator of excitability across the nervous system. The nervous system is just a giant electrical organ. And in Fragile X, we know that hyperexcitability is oftentimes uh, contributes to many of the, the um, features of, of Fragile X that, that patients uh, struggle with, from hyperactivity to anxiety to sensory hypersensitivity, even for those few who have seizures. All of this is in play, and this channel that we've developed a medicine for is really a master regulator that has gone gone sideways in Fragile X, and we've developed a medicine that corrects that. And so far, all the all the work that we've seen in our preclinical testing would suggest it should have broad uh, therapeutic benefit for for patients uh, uh, with Fragile X. We're really excited about the potential for BK channel openers in the treatment of Fragile X. The Keras compound is an especially good BK channel opener, and this is a particularly well-validated treatment target. Not only is there potential for the treatment of Fragile X with these drugs, but BK channel openers may be a class of drugs that has enormous crossover potential in treating autism and other neurodevelopmental disorders. So our lead molecule for KRIS is a, a molecule that you will come to know as CARE0193. We just call it 193. We've spent five years working to discover and develop this molecule. Over five years of investment by, by KRIS and really enabled by uh, amazing partnerships with academic collaborators and foundations like Fraxa. In fact, Fraxa has been one of the key reasons why Kairos is where it's at now. Our co-founders, Sylvain uh, Brio and, and Olivier Parrish were recipients of a Fraxa grant over 10 years ago working on this BK channel story. Uh, and, and it was that seminal investment by Fraxa and ongoing support that Fraxa and other foundations have provided that have really move that, that story forward. You know, if you think about why a foundation like Fraxa exists, I've worked in the nonprofit sector, it works to make strategic investments in promising stories, usually very early on. But at the end of the day, uh, it's about putting points on the board for families. It's about reducing these stories to practice. And that takes a whole stakeholder community uh, to deliver. It begins with academics, it moves on to small biotechs and then large pharma. At the end of the day, uh, parents and families are, are really a central part of that. But really our story at KRIS begins uh, with that, that grant that Fraxa uh, provided uh, Sylvain uh, Brio in, in Orléans, France. Uh, but the molecule 193 has just entered phase one clinical trials. This is a brand new molecule. It hasn't been developed for anything other than Fragile X. So, as a result, the first step for our clinical development is to do safety studies in healthy volunteers. So phase one is really all about that essential contract we have with patients to ensure that we know everything about this drug so that we do not harm anyone. The, our greatest challenge is not to do harm while also testing ways to bring benefit. So that study has just begun. Uh, it's kicked off in Belgium. We're working with partners uh, just outside of Antwerp. Uh, and we're just super excited to see that, that move forward. We expect that trial to wrap up by the end of the year, but we won't know the results of it till uh, early 2025. But this is really an exciting moment for me as a drug hunter, Frax as an organization, uh, a, an academy of, of researchers around the world that have worked on this BK story to finally see a molecule specifically developed on this story for Fragile X to go into human beings. It's the first essential step towards realizing the promise of that, that science. Fraxa has validated the Keras compound in the Drug Validation Initiative at the University of Chile, and it's performed really, really well. So we're really excited about this. We're also excited about the overall class potential and Fraxa has sponsored 
a number of studies in animal models of Fragile X using a variety of different BK channel openers, and they seem to rescue quite a few of the symptoms of Fragile X. And where are we in this journey? Uh, it's the first step in clinical development, as we would say, or clinical trials. It begins with healthy volunteers, but the next step will be ultimately to take this into patients with Fragile X syndrome. Um, we've learned a lot about how our molecule behaves in some of the genetic mouse models of Fragile X. And everything we've learned would suggest that, that our drug should have broad therapeutic benefit. In other words, there are very few domains of behavioral abnormalities or even sensory hypersensitivity that we can model preclinically that our drug has not shown effects, even dramatic effects on. So uh, really, you know, once we can demonstrate that the drug is safe and well tolerated and so far everything we've learned from all the required safety studies and preclinical animal species would suggest that we're not expecting anything there, we'll progress to what's called phase two, which is where we do a proof of concept study. Basically, we have an idea, a hypothesis that this should work, and then we begin testing that in patients. Uh, so we're right now working with a lot of the key uh, experts in, across the world. Many of them are running clinical centers that families out there see on a, you know, on, you know, on a regular basis to try to design a study that gives us the best chance at asking the question, will this create benefit for families and where? Because at the end of the day, FDA really wants to hear the voice of the patient, their caregivers, clinicians and the data itself. So we're in the process of designing those studies. If, if in phase two, we see evidence of benefit, then we're gonna have to require, we'll be required to do a much larger study where we repeat that, replicate that finding in a larger group of individuals in order to get the approval from a regulator like FDA to make that available finally for patients. So I'm always asked to, to try to take my science hat half off and try to explain really how we expect this drug to work. You know, a lot of the challenges patients face, uh, the, we, we see the symptoms clinically, we can see anxiety, we can see hyperactivity, we can see sensory hypersensitivity quite a bit. That's what we see, but what's going on inside the brain is a, a, a difficulty managing the excitability of the, the electrical circuits in the brain. And uh, that's a problem that's been long described in Fragile X. And what we believe is the, the genetic driver of, of uh, Fragile X, this loss of this protein called FMRP binds to our channel. And because it, it is lost, the channel is unable to regulate excitability like it normally does. And as a result, that's why you see many of these uh, symptoms appear in, in individuals who've lost that FMRP. Uh, so our compound, our molecule, actually restores that, that, that function of the channel, compensates for the loss of FMRP in the brain, and as a result, reduces excitability. And so we expect, as we've now seen in animal models, by reducing that excitability, we're going to reduce many of the uh, clinical symptoms that you see often associated with that. So we would expect, and we've now seen in animal models, reductions in hyperactivity, reductions in anxiety, improvements in activities of daily living. Uh, we can address cognitive abnormalities, deficits in, in, in memory and, and social memory. But I think really the sweet spot of the BK story is in sensory function. We really believe that the channel is a primary regulator of sensory hypersensitivity. And in Fragile X, we know that's a, a prevalent issue. It's a prevalent issue across many neurodevelopmental disorders. And so we think that, that uh, our medicine will be very, very helpful in reducing hypersensitivity to changes in various sensory environments, not just auditory or tactile, the, all domains we think it'll be valuable for. I think Fraxa can continue to accelerate uh, work in the field, um, principally by doing what it's already doing. And, and continuing to expand that. You know, I've mentioned KRIS has been the direct beneficiary of Fraxa and its, its strategic investments in the field of research at its beginning and where we are now. The, the origin story of KRIS begins with a Fraxa grant to our co-founders on the BK Channel story. 
But really what has brought our, our medicines development program on BK really into the limelight has been uh, our, our ability to access the standardized therapeutic screening battery that Fraxa provides companies uh, and supports companies with the evaluation of their, their experimental compounds. We would not be here if it was not for that support. These kind of strategic investments are really what transform a rare disease field. Uh, most companies are interested in, in rare diseases, but most companies do not have the internal expertise and or resources to evaluate promising you know, leads that could be adapted for fragile X or another uh, rare disease because they just don't have the internal resources. They require these partnerships with foundations like Fraxa to enable that. Um, it, uh, it's, it's, there are many rare disease communities uh, from the ultra rare to the less rare um, that simply don't have research oriented foundations like Fraxa providing these resources, don't have communities supporting uh, these foundations through giving. And as a result, their stories are not advancing and it's, 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 it's heartbreaking, uh, but I would say Beyond what Fraxa already does for the Fragile X community, there's so many you know, learnings from their journey, from Katie and, and Mike's journey and all the families involved in Fraxa that should be shared more broadly with other foundations, other rare communities that are just getting started, trying to figure out how to do this, how to make an impact, how to get scientists involved, how to translate what's going on and bring companies into the fold. Uh, you guys are a success story, um, and it's you know I, I think the greatest benefit you could do to accelerate uh, that is to rise the tide for everyone by sharing as much as you can with those, and it's only going to come back on you.